I'm sure you guys have noticed in the past year, I've become obsessed with going to different Airbnbs all over California. Not only are these houses just cool to look at, but they're actually pretty interesting businesses. Most of them are able to charge a really good nightly rate, despite a lot of times being in kind of a random off the beaten path area. And I actually just bought a property I plan to make into an Airbnb. So I wanted to learn all about what makes one successful. So today we're gonna take a look at a fellow YouTuber, Rob Builds, really successful successful Airbnb out in Joshua Tree. You guys may recognize his house from his videos. They're really good. You should definitely check them out. He has way more info on his house in particular. So I'll link that down below. So let's start with a tour of the house and then get into the business side of this Airbnb. Welcome to the tiny house. What's cool about this one, obviously, is that it's two stories like a real two stories. With a lot of these tiny houses, they'll have kind of a loft situation, but it's only like 14 feet tall. This feels like a legitimate house. So let's take a look inside. Here is the main floor, the living room, you would call it. They have a sofa bed here. So this tiny house can accommodate up to four people, but you know, it is a little, snug we have three people staying so we'll see how it goes report back so i actually slept on the sofa bed and had my friend sleep in the upstairs bed and can report it actually was really comfy um but they went with a really cool like mid-century modern design with this light up here the wallpaper while it may not be a super large room in general it definitely feels a lot bigger than a regular tiny house it's got all the essentials of Airbnb, and you'll definitely notice that it feels very complete with the furnishings, decor, and wallpapers all matching and having a nice theme. You can tell this tiny house, it was made with actual attention to detail, not like some Airbnbs where they're just throwing some Ikea furniture in there and calling it good. Like they, you know, they really went for it. And I, I think that's very cool. Here we have the kitchen. It's kind of a galley style kitchen, but you've got everything you need. I mean, this isn't really meant for someone to live full time, but you absolutely could. You've got microwave, oven, a fridge, good size fridge, maybe a little smaller than your typical fridge, but for a tiny house Airbnb, it's pretty great. I like these shelves here. They look good, but they actually are really functional too. I wanna to put Shelby was here. Here's the bathroom. This is my first impression of it. Actually, I haven't been in here yet. Love that we have a window. Just that is always such a nice vibe with a bathroom. Really cool lights. I love that. I think that looks so good. Very modern with the, you know, all white look with black accents. I feel like that's what all of the newly built houses are doing these days. It's really clean and it looks really good. Okay, let's check out upstairs. Here we have the lofted bedroom. So up here is a double bed. One cool thing about up here, they have the ceilings, like just the slightest bit vaulted up. So it feels really big. This doesn't even feel like a tiny home. I actually don't know if it would fully be considered a tiny house, but hey, everyone else on YouTube is calling it a tiny house. So I think it feels very spacious with that and with all the windows and everything. I like the tile. I think that looks good. We've got a little closet over here to store things. I was actually kind of worried about that with a tiny house. I was like, where do we put our suitcases? In this one, you definitely have room for that. And heading to the other side of the room, there is a door to go outside. And from the bedroom, there is a decent sized balcony up here. So you get a nice view of the mountains and Joshua trees and everything. I mean, out in Joshua tree, there's not like a ton of stuff out here. So it's kind of, you see really, really far, which is cool, especially when you're up higher. I've stayed at another Airbnb and honestly on the ground floor, you know, you're hearing coyotes and stuff at night. It's nice to be elevated a little bit. So I love that they have this and I like that it's kind of covered too. 
And then back down on the first floor, there's a covered carport sort of outdoor space with a picnic table where you can hang out. And this is nice because it provides some shade. It can get really hot over here. So it's great that they have this. So now that you've seen the tour, let's learn about how it was created, how much it cost and how it does on Airbnb. The total cost to build this tiny house was $165,000. And when you see how much it can make on Airbnb, I think you'll agree that $165,000 is a pretty low cost for this house. A pretty big reason for that is because the cost of land is remarkably low in Joshua Tree compared to almost everywhere else in California, but you can still charge a decently high nightly rate. Even though Joshua Tree is pretty desolate and there's not a whole lot out there, it still gets 3 million visitors per year. And there's not a whole lot of hotels, so the Airbnbs do very well. So the first step in creating an Airbnb in Joshua Tree is getting a piece of land. Like I said, land is uniquely cheap here, but there can be a bit of a catch. Go on Zillow and you'll find a ton of plots of land under $100,000 simply unheard of for California. Here's one, five acres for $20,000. But there is a big issue with most of these plots of land. You know, one of the biggest factors that you want to consider whenever you're building a house in Joshua Tree is you want to find something that has a power pole on it. You know, there are going to be a lot of listings out there that's like, you know, beautiful acreage and it's like $20,000. And you're like, wow, this is an amazing piece of land. But then you read the listing and the listing says perfect for solar or well. And that basically means that it would be completely off the grid and it would cost you like fifty to $100,000 to bring utilities to that, you know, to that land. I really don't think that you're going to spend less than like twenty to $30,000 for like a quality piece of land. But Rob was able to get his land for even less than that a couple years ago. The land was relatively low at the time. I bought it for 12500 bucks. I wouldn't be able to do it again for that price. Like the full price that I paid for the house would be very difficult to do in like today's dollars. And it's only been like a year and a half, two years since I started that. You can go through all the effort to build a rental home, but that doesn't necessarily guarantee it'll do well on Airbnb. I was interested to see how the tiny house did this year, especially with the illness and everything affecting it. You know what? It has done exceptionally well. Um, I have been 100% booked basically since day one. Like I launched it in January of 2020. January and February, I was 100% booked at lower rates because I was new and I didn't really know like how well it would do on Airbnb. I had a hunch because I've been doing it for a bit. The sickness hit. Basically, I had to take long-term renters from Airbnb from like March, uh, April, and May. And so I had one guy stay there for two months. I had another guy stay there for a full month. So I gave him like a 40% discount just to cover, you know, my, my bills for the most part. I relaunched in July. And since July, I have been booked 100%. Like literally the, like, I haven't had an open day except for days that I blocked out for like a friend to stay or like if I did a shoot there myself. Another cool thing I just remembered about Joshua Tree is they don't have rental restrictions like a lot of cities do and like the house I just bought over in Palm Springs does. Here in Palm Springs, you can only rent 28 times a year plus five more times in August and September, but in Joshua Tree, you can rent it as many times as you want. And I will show you guys this house in a video very soon, so stay tuned. But yeah, it's it's been killing it. Um, obviously, it kind of is successful on YouTube too, which helps, but I think that even if it wasn't on YouTube, it probably would be like a still a smashing success out there. How did you go about pricing it per night? So here's the deal. When you're starting an Airbnb, you kind of start low and you want to get your reviews up and you basically want to baby your first like five to 10 guests because you want a five star review. The more reviews you have, uh, you know, the higher it's going to get pushed in the, in the search rankings and everything like that. But, you know, the kind of the the trick to Airbnb or like the motto is like, if you are booked 100%, your price too low. Really, it's just like every month I'm 100% booked. So I'm like, okay, I guess I gotta like drive up prices. So I started at $99 a day and now I'm at 215 a day. And then on weekends, I'm at 249 uh, a day. So going up and up and then when people stop booking 100%, I kind of know, you know, what the average nightly rate's gonna be. In a perfect month, um, Roughly speaking, it would be about $6,700 gross. And my mortgage and all my bills and all my expenses come out to 1200 bucks. So in the best case scenario, we're looking at a profit of 5,500 bucks. 
So of course that's the best case scenario. I'm sure there will be months in the future where it makes less or more than that, but it was cool to learn that even amid the illness, it has still done really well on Airbnb. So that's gonna be it for this video. I actually vlogged my experience staying here if you guys wanna check it out. And if you wanna learn more about this Airbnb or creating an Airbnb in general, definitely check out Rob's channel. I'll link it down below because he has a ton of info and videos on his house and experiences. So that's it for today. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.